My friend, thank you for stopping by Blossoming by Grace and Grit. This is Gloria Restoy. Don't just pass by, stay a while, gather with us, subscribe and click on the bell so that you're notified of every new video that I make. Be a part of our community, be a part of our family, and your life will never be the same again as we learn the precepts and the foundational truths of the Word of God, which have stood the test of time. Let us change the world together by changing ourselves first, allowing Him to change us. Thank you for your visit. Thank you for your subscription. It means a lot to me. Have a blessed day. The heart, a spiritual organ. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45, a good person produces good things from the treasury of his heart and an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what is in your heart. In Strong's exhaustive concordance of the Bible, which is a listing of primary words contained in the King James Version of the Bible, the brain is not mentioned once, whereas the heart is cited 826 times. The heart is the locus of physical and spiritual being and represents the central wisdom of feelings as opposed to the head or the wisdom of reason. It is compassion and understanding. It is life-giving and complex. It is a symbol for love. Lev, L-E-V, means heart in Hebrew. And it was not just a body part to the Israelites. It was a spiritual organ. They thought of the heart as the organ that gives physical life and the place where you think and make sense of the world. But also, it is a place where your emotions make choices. The heart and its anatomy and its function is the primary organ of your circular story system. Your heart contains four main sections or chambers made up of muscles and powered by electrical impulses. Your brain and your nervous system directs your heart's function. But why was the heart so important to Almighty God. Understanding what the Bible says about the heart is really understanding the human condition. The Bible says that the heart is fickle. One day the heart may think one thing and the other day he may think another. The heart is the inward self where feelings, emotions, and thinking occurs. The soul is the entire being, mind, will, and emotions. And the mind is the inward part where thinking occurs. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul and with all of your mind. Love him with your heart, with your feelings. Love him with your mind and your will. Love the Lord with your entire being. My friends, believing with the mind is not enough to be born again. One must also believe in one's heart. That is, with the mind, we believe with the mind we have faith, with the mind we want to get close to God, but with the heart we trust God and we live for Him. And that can only come from a grateful heart. Blaise Pascal was a French mathematician in the 1600s. He was a physicist and a philosopher. And he said in one of his famous quotes, there are two kinds of people one can call reasonable those who serve God with all of their heart 
because they know him, and those who seek him with all of their heart because they do not know him and they need him. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 13, the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And this is the one of the biggest mysteries behind King David, the young boy who killed Goliath. He was called a man after God's own heart. Despite his sins, his failures, his mistakes, his flaws, he ran to God. He repented and asked forgiveness. And he moved forward. Let us pray. Father God, thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for our Savior. Thank you for our Redeemer, God. Thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that was shed on Calvary for each and every one of us, oh God. No matter how bad, how good, no matter what condition our heart is in or what condition we think our heart is in, we don't want to think, oh God, that the heart is evil. We don't want to think that we may be bad. But Lord, we know the Bible is our blueprint for life. It is the love letter that you wrote for us. It is the guide, it is a map, my God. And the Bible says otherwise. And I pray, God, that you help us to put our heart upon the altar, God, on your altar, my Lord, and not on our altar, my God. May we always glorify you, Lord. May we always seek your word, God. May we always want to learn from you, Lord. I pray that my friend listening to this audio, God, that is able to experience revelation with you, my God, and that his heart or her heart is completely and utterly in love with you, with no doubts, no unbelief, just knowing that you are God and that you are good all the time and that the heart is a spiritual organ that we must surrender to you every single day of our lives. Lord God, help us to guard our heart because out of it flows the issues of life. This is where everything happens. Just like the mind is a battlefield, my God. There the battles are either won or they are lost. But our heart, my God, is where all our feelings, the central place of our feelings, my God, where this is where we act. This is where we, our behavior is formed. This is where all of our belief system is formed, my God. And Lord, I just pray, my Father, for each person, everyone that listens to this audio, that they will surrender their hearts to you daily because you are truly the only cardiologist that can perform open heart surgery on us that will be effective, God, that will be effective you are the only one that can give us a new heart. Thank you, Father. Mighty God, precious Father, precious Savior, precious and mighty and powerful, we pray this prayer. In the name of your precious Son, Jesus, amen.